Welcome back to Design Smith. Today we're going to be talking about combining photography with classic Swiss design. Before we get started, please consider subscribing to support the channel. All right, so we all know that a lot of Swiss design posters tend to be very text heavy. However, that's not always the case. We have plenty of examples showing Swiss design principles combined with photography. And there are endless amount of examples for this. However, what I'd like to show you in this video is how to best set up your grid and your artboard in preparation for photography. So right here is my Swiss grid setup. And if you'd like to learn more on how to set one of these up yourself, check out this video right up here. So in general, from the studying that I've done, you typically want to have a Swiss grid setup that goes three columns across and five rows down, or simply an odd number for both of them. So for example, you can go five across and seven down. It just depends on how much text and how many elements you'll be placing onto your poster. But in general, I find that three by five works best for me in most cases. So the very first thing that I like to do is plan the spot where my photo is going. And let's say for example, that my photo is gonna be a portrait, then I'm gonna plan exactly where that's gonna go according to my grid. So first let's go up here to view and make sure that our smart guides are checked. That's gonna help you whenever you go to create your shape. So right there is a really good placement. However, if you want to just kind of make it a little bit more offset, you can do something like that, or you could move it down here to the bottom. It really just depends on where you want your focus to be. But having this grid set up will give you peace of mind, knowing that your image is fitting well within a system that you've already created. And let's go ahead and lay down some text. And we'll make this poster about one of the greatest things in the entire world, which is ice cream. And the font that I'm using here is Manrope. It's an open source font that you can get from Google. I'm going to take this period off right here. I don't think we need that. So I'm going to go in here and just kern this really quick. All right, looking good there. And one thing I want to do is I want this to read sideways just like this. And I want this to be rather large. So I'm going to bring it up to around here. And because we have the kerning exactly the way I want it, I'm going to make a copy of this over here so that we can use it for a future text. And since we're so close to 250, I'm gonna set this to 250 in size. And let's go ahead and align this to our grid. And it's totally fine that this is not hitting this grid right here, as long as the beginning of it hits that one right there. For this particular poster, I'm only gonna have two blocks of text here. So let's follow our Swiss type formula, which states that our secondary type size is gonna be 30% of what our primary type size is. And just a reminder, you can do math in Illustrator. So right up here where we have the 250, we're gonna type in 250 times 0.3, and that will give us our secondary type size. And any 90s kids out there, remember the milk, it does a body good. We're gonna do the, it does a soul good. Why not? That's my brilliant marketing improvisation for you. Okay, for the most part, the kerning on this looks good. So let's go ahead and just kind of clean a couple of things up here. All right, so the kerning on that looks good. However, I want to adjust the leading just a little bit. I'm going to bring it down to about 80 points. Let's bring our grid back. And then I'm going to set the baseline right there on that grid. And I think that I'll add a couple of little fun elements just kind of right in here, maybe at the corner. And we'll have it go down to that grid line right there. It's looking pretty cool. And then we can always color these later. And let's bring this one down here and we'll go about half the size and we'll just stick it right around here. That'll be kind of like our starting point, just kind of get a good bearing. And we'll set the center of that circle to be right there at that grid. And just temporarily, what we'll do in Illustrator is draw a rectangle over all of this select these two circles and we'll create a clipping mask and we'll bring that shape to the front and then for these two shapes right here we'll do like a little ice cream color palette and if you're unaware the illustrator has this they have their own built-in swatch libraries so make sure you're in your swatches panel go over here and go to open swatch library then we've got foods and then ice cream and so this is pretty cool we've got our own little ice cream color palette that we can do here and i'll do like these two colors right there that looks nice and fun then I'll change the text on these to like a maybe a dark brown or kind of a lighter brown and then I'll make a background of maybe like a light vanilla color or something like that I like that one I also really like the mint that's looking good Okay, so we have our structure for the entire poster. Now we need to add our photo in. There's a lot of ways that you can go about this, but I'll show you my preferred way. I'm gonna select everything and we're gonna hit copy. And now I switched over to Photoshop and I'll show you what my document size is. We've got 18 by 24 at 300 resolution and hit okay. And now since we already have everything copied onto our clipboard, I'm gonna hit paste 
and we're going to paste as a smart object and hit OK. And you'll notice that it's scaling everything down because of that clipping mask. So all you have to do is go up here to your percentage and type in 100%. And that will size everything the way it's supposed to be. So now we'll get this right here in place. And everything here is merged together as one layer. So now we need to go back into Illustrator and grab the placeholder for this photo. So I'm just going to select the placeholder here, hit copy, go back here into Photoshop, and now paste this as a smart object. And now we'll just line this on top. And I'll zoom in to make sure that we get our placement right. And then hit OK. Might have to adjust just a little bit, but there we go. All right, let's go find a photo. This is one of my go-to sites, it's Unsplash, where you can go get some free imagery. And I'd like something a little bit on the colorful side, maybe a little bit dramatic, but definitely more simplistic. I like this one here, it's got those sprinkles in the background. So I'm gonna right click and hit Copy Image, and now we'll go here into Photoshop, and we'll make sure that we have our placeholder selected. I'm gonna hit Paste, and now I'm gonna select both of these layers right here. Hold down Option on Mac or Alt on Windows until we get that little arrow, and then we're just gonna click. So now this is confining that image to that space. And now I'm gonna go in here and just rotate this, and we've got those black areas right there, so let's just enlarge right here until we don't see any of those areas anymore, and then I'll just hit OK. And let's add some paper texture effects just to give this a little bit more of a vintage feel. I've got a pretty good paper library here that I've collected over the years. I really like this one right here. It's got a nice little soft texture to it and I think it'll lend itself very well to this design. So let's just enlarge this over the whole thing. And now let's just change our blending mode until we get a result that we like. Okay, I like what Difference is doing in terms of applying the texture to the poster, but obviously we have to invert the colors. So I'm gonna hit Command I on the keyboard and that will invert all of our colors. And I really like how that's applied to the entire poster. So here is our ice cream. It does a soul good poster. And that is how you plan for combining photography with Swiss design. I hope I taught you something in Illustrator or Photoshop today. If there's anything in Swiss design that you would like me to cover, let me know down in the comments. Please consider subscribing to support the channel and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.